Hi guys, hope you all are up and running. I am Dishan Tarik with this tutorial where we will play with 3D and programming at same time. This tutorial is about making an analog clock which shows crunch time of system like you see in the demo. This is slow paced tutorial so you can learn easily. Before starting the tutorial, make sure you know the basics of Python because we will be using Python language for programming this clock. If you are good, so let's get started. First, the scene organization is very important in any project. So, we will make a new collection, rename it as analog clock. Then, we will be needing the cube, move cube to new collection, which is analog clock. Currently, we don't need default collection, collapse it and switch it off. Now we need to switch to top view and you can do it in multiple ways. You can hold tilt the button and hover over the top to switch to the top view. Switch to edit mode and turn on the wireframe. Now select top 4 vertices and make sure all 4 vertices are selected. Move these vertices upward up to 11 or 12 units on y axis scale inward along x axis also scale the bottom vertices inward along x axis make sure the origin of geometry stays at the world origin switch to object mode and our needle of a clock is ready Rename this cube as clock needle or minutes clock needle. The depth of the needle is still too much. Scale it along the z-axis so it can match height of real clock needle. Now again switch to the top view and make the duplicate of this needle by pressing shift D. Simply right click to let this needle go. Now hide the original needle for time being and rename the duplicated needle to horse. Now switch to the wireframe mode, unhide minutes needle, bring hard needle to edit mode, select top foot vertices and make it shorter then minutes needle move the hard needle under the minutes needle switch to top view make sure the analog clock collection is selected add a new cylinder in the analog clock and bring down the versus number to 16. Scale it down so it can match the actual needles. Match the height of the cylinder to other needle. Move it a bit above the minutes needle. Switch to top view. Go to edit mode, select the top 6 vertices of the cylinder. Put these vertices along the y axis and make this needle taller than a minutes needle. On these 3 vertices by pressing dot from number pad. Put it along y axis and press 0 to make it flat. Also scale it along x axis to make the needle pointy. Do the same with bottom vertices. Rename this needle to clock needle seconds. Now switch to the solid mode and check the rotation of needle along the z axis. Now 
needles are working as expected and now we will model the digits of analog clock create a new collection name it as clock needles and move the needles into this new collection create a new collection under the analog clock and this collection will hold the digits for this analog clock now create a new text under this new collection switch to edit mode and just write one to give the thickness to this digit apply solidify modifier and apply a suitable thickness switch to top view and now we need to set the origin of this digit first set the origin to geometry so the origin lies in the center of the geometry bring the digit to world origin move this digit under the digits collection switch on the needles and move the digit on the top of minutes needle and under the seconds needle make sure to rename this digit as digit underscore one under the collection Add the origin of digit to the world origin make 11 duplicates of this digit edit each digit so we can have digits from 1 to 12 and make sure each digit has prefix of digit underscore in its name it is very important as we will be using this naming convention in the programming and further part of tutorial. Now we will create the rest of hardware of this analog clock. Now we are ready for programming this analog clock. Create a new file by pressing the new key. First of all, we will import the PPY module in our script. If the size of code is too small to read, you can scale it up by holding control and moving wheel up from your mouse. So first of all, what is BPY? BPY is a package which allows us to interact with the Blender using Python.
We can access and modify the properties and values of objects present in the Blender scene using BPY package. If you know the basics of Python, you should know that hash is used for commenting in Python language. Now, we need to distribute or separate the digits on the clock in clockwise order. To achieve this, first we will create an empty list of digits in Python language. We will create a list with the name of digit list. This list will hold all the digits in the Blender scene. Now, we have to find and populate this list. For this purpose, we will use for loop which will run 12 times. On each iteration, we will look for a digit and add it to the digit list. The objects can be found in bpy.data.objects. And we will pass the name for that digit or that object we need to find from our object list in Blender. We need to find 12 digits from our Blender scene collection, so we will run this loop for 12 times. Every time the value of 5 will be changed and a new digit will be found and added to the digit list. We can add the new found digit into our digit list by using append function. To make sure that we have found all digits, we will check the length of the digit list. You need to save the script as .py file to run it. To view the results, you need to toggle the window console. You can run the script by pressing run script button from top right corner of script windows. Ok, we are getting 12 for the length of digit list, that means we have found all 12 digits and added those digits to the digit list. Our next task is to spread the digits in clockwise order on the clock. Every digit that represents hours on analog clock has angle of 30 degree in between them, which means we need to multiply the digits with 30 and assign the resulting value as a rotation along z axis. We will create a variable named as count which will keep the count of digits currently being placed on the analog clock. Once again we will use for loop which will iterate 12 times for placing the 12 digits on analog clock in clockwise order. First we will calculate the angle of current digit and the current digit is 1 as per the value of count. To calculate the angle, we simply multiply the current digit with 30. And the other important thing that Blender do not accept the angle as degree, but it accept angle as radian. So we have to convert the hover angle to a radian. To convert degree to radian, we need to multiply the given value with pi value and then divide it by 180 degree. To get the pi value, we need to import the math package. Now, as we got our angle in radian, now we need to assign this value to digits rotation. To assign this value to the digits rotation, you need to access the Euler rotation value of the digit. And this is how it will be done. Digit dot rotation underscore Euler dot Z is equal to our angle in radian. Now let's see how the rotation in Blender works. Needle will rotate clockwise if we provide negative values as angle for Z rotation.
while calculating the angle for digits we will be getting the positive values as a result we will increment the count variable so every time the for loop runs the next digit in the list will be calculated now run the script and you will see that the digits are spread in anti-clockwise order and this is not what we want to reset the rotation of digits we need a reset function here we will assign 0 to all axes for Euler rotation we will reset these digits every time we run this script once again we will loop through the digit list to reset every digit present in the digit list to spread the digits in clockwise order we will provide negative angle this will simply be achieved by placing minus sign before hover angle in gradient An exception has occurred as we have provided wrong name for reset function. Make the correction and run the script again. Now we can see that the digits are spreaded in clockwise order. These digits are still wrong in rotation but our main concern is giving an idea. Our digit distribution is completed and now it's time to program the needles of clock. This will be done in same manner as we did with the digits. First, we will find the clock needles from Blender scene and then we will assign the functionalities to these clock needles. Once again, we will use bpy.data.objects and then we will pass the name of needle to find it from the Blender scene. We will do same with the other needles, just replacing their names. To reset the rotation of clock needles every time the script runs, we will use our reset rotation function. Now we will write the script for working of this clock. We will use thread and time package to run the clock properly and asynchronously. Now define a new method and this method will make the clock work. This function will require three arguments to work and those three arguments will be the three needles of clock we have already found using bpy.data.objects. Now we will define a loop which will run infinitely. Now we need to get the current time of system. We can get the current time using time.localTime function of time package. This will return the current time of system. Now we will extract the seconds, minutes and hours from the return time. Now let's rotate the second needle on the clock.
first we will calculate the angle for second needle using basic formula for calculating the angle for needle there are 60 seconds in total and we will divide front seconds by 60 seconds and multiply them with 360 let's consider an example let's suppose the second needle is at 15 seconds we will divide 15 by 60 which will give us 0 0.25 or fourth part of the 60 seconds now multiplying 0 0.25 with 360 will give us 90 which is the fourth part of 360 and we have 90 as degree angle which means the second needle has rotated from 0 to 90 on 15 seconds to rotate it clockwise we will convert this 90 degree to minus 90 degree this formula will give us angles in degree we have to convert this degree angle to the radian angle as we did it earlier make sure this converted angle is in negative value for testing purpose we will run this loop for only 60 seconds we will define a counter variable which will increase after each second we will check here if the counter value is above than 60 or 60 seconds has passed to break the loop also reset the second rotation to zero now we will create a thread to run this clip in background thread can be created by using threading package and calling the thread function of threading package we need to pass two parameters in thread function the first will be the target we need to run in background in our case that is a clock engine the next parameter is the arguments that need to pass to the clock engine function and in our case those arguments are the clock needles Finally, we need to start this thread. If we run the script, we will see that the clock didn't work and second needle didn't rotate it. This is because of the loop is running continuously and not waiting for update the values for needle what we have to do is to add the time dot sleep function in our while loop and pass one as parameter to the time dot sleep wait for the one second run the script again and we got exception as we made a mistake in thread method make sure the t of thread is capital make correction and run the script again and now you can see that the second needle is working correctly this will complete the loop or the revolution from front seconds up to the 60 seconds Let's reduce our second counter or loop counter to 15 seconds. If we run our script again, the second needle will tick for 15 seconds from the current second. Now, 
it's time for the rotating the minutes needle the logic is same as second needle we will calculate the angle by dividing the minutes by 60 and multiplying it by 360 but this time we will be using minutes instead of seconds Logic for rotating the whole needle is basically same. Using this formula, the whole needle will work as expectedly. But the problem will be, the whole needle will keep on jumping from digit to digit like seconds or minutes needle but we need a smooth transition from one hour to another hour like the real clock in the real world so we will change formula for calculating the hour angle let's consider an example and do it on calculator for better understanding. The time on my system is currently 9.57. Where 9 is R and multiplying with 30 will result in 270. Currently the minutes are 58, divided by 60 and multiplying with 30 will result in 29. If we add 29 to 270, we will get 299. This will be the current angle of our needle on analog clock. We will keep all angles value in negative so the rotation can work correctly. Call reset rotation for minutes and hour needle. We are all set to go. Run the script. Now you can see that hour needle is almost at 10 and the minutes needle is 1 minute away from 60 minutes. Now let's assign the proper material to this clock.
our material assignment is done let's check our analog clock once again I have increased the duration of while loop to 2 minutes. If you want to run this loop forever, comment this section. In next part of this tutorial, I'll show you how to set the custom time for the analog clock. If you guys have learned something from this tutorial, do subscribe.